my eighth trip out about and I wanted to get here which is Coxtall car parking that's where we are today unfortunately when I tried to start my car this afternoon would not start key in the ignition chug 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 it did not ignite key in the ignition did not ignite no igniting was going on <laughs> dad tried to jump start it in reverse which I don't think you can do He's probably scraping my mirrors with some sharp bushes as he did it and it wouldn't go so we had to call out the mechanic because you can't call out AA even though I'm insured for breakdown cover with AA because they won't come out if you're what is it a quarter of a mile within the radius of your own home <laughs> so we had to phone the local mechanic who we just been to to see if there's anything wrong with the car yesterday so I'd only just met them and he was doing a test drive of my car with me in the passenger seat and he was like, "Oh, it looks pretty good, there's nothing wrong with it, Ooh, it's a pretty good car. And then, like, that's the last drive I did. From there I drove home yesterday and that was it. And then the next day, today, I got in and it just wouldn't start. So we had to call the mechanics out again to come by in our village and he could start it up with jumper cable things, but he said, the battery's not liking it it's like almost flat maybe you should drive it to the garage while we've got it going and we'll replace the battery so apparently the battery was the original battery of the car so it's been in there for 12 years plus so we've now replaced for 140 pounds the original battery of the car with a new battery lucas something and i hope that that's gonna mean I can turn on the car. I don't know why it drained. I don't know if it was just a shitty battery that had been in there for a long time. On their little gizmo they plugged into the battery, it said replace battery, like it needs replacing. So now hopefully when I start the car in the mornings it'll actually start, unless I'm leaving something on inside the car that's draining the battery, which I hope isn't the case. I turn the light off when I go out. I've taken the cigarette lighter. There was a USB drive thing Akko gave me. Here we go that you put in the cigarette lighter. Um, I had that plugged in and like a blue light was emanating from it when you turned the car off in the evening. So I assume that might have been trying to drain something. Also kind of whirring under the dash, but the guy, there's two guy, two mechanic guys at the place, one called Sam, who's like the boss, and one called Barney, who was quite talkative. And yeah, the Barney guy suggested taking out the cigarette lighter thing. He also, I asked him if the whirring under the dash was anything, and he said it might be the manual ventilation system kind of settling after you shut down the car, or it might be some part of the engine just calming down sort of thing. But he said it shouldn't be drawing power or anything so it shouldn't be a problem so yeah i was gonna come up here chill out and read the manual for my dash cam they also said if you're doing a dash cam oh i should mention that there's this is where the, the cigarette lighter this is a, um like a usb cigarette lighter thing and then over here there's another usb and auxiliary port which you could use that for either the sat level dash cam, but guy said you can pl you c there's a way that, that they can do the garage, or you can get Halfords in Plymouth where you could connect your dash cam directly to the battery via cables that go into the, I guess they must go out of the cockpit here and into the bonnet somehow. So they might be able to do that for me, so I might ask them to do that. But yeah, I need to work out how the dash cam works. I bought a card reader for it. And yeah, that's what I came up here to do, but it's been all a bit finicky. I'm just looking around, it's kind of ugly. There's, in Cogsaw Car Park, there's a bunch of litter. There's like drinks cans and things just lying around. It must be the Plymouth people coming down here. They're just leaving their crap around. There's no bins, but they should be taking this stuff with them. I'm not part of the cult that goes, leave no trace after camping all the time. But behind it, the physical meaning of, you know, you should take stuff with you and not litter. Well, here's a new phrase for you, litterers be shitterers. You should take your litter with you. How easy is it just to put packaging? You have some food, you put the packaging in your bag. Take a bag out wherever you go, put packaging in it if you don't want to put it in your pockets. And then when you get home, put that in the bin. But don't just kind of leave it here. So I agree with the sentiment, but I'm not going to be one of those people who say, leave no trace. 
because it's become a collectivist cult now. Everyone's saying it like blind devotion and the government have started making laws on it, like mandating on that phrase I noticed recently. Like with the camping map, if you go on the camping map, you know, they're fighting for wild camping rights on, on Dartmoor to be preserved by the generous landowners. But I noticed the councils have been trying to insert the word leave no trace into their new rules about what you can and can't do on Dartmoor. And they got that from the YouTube video makers who were like blabbing this kind of cultist saying around. Unthinkingly, when we all leave a trace in some way, or you could just leave a trace by putting a rock on a cairn, which is something everyone does when they're walking. And there are other things too. I mean, the more itself, how it's shaped is humans leaving a trace. So yeah, rant over. Look at my views. I parked at the end of Cockstore Car Park. You've got this weird um, sundial monument thing and the Hellmouth town is uh, obviously down there. Nice place to park up. Might go for a little walk in a bit. We're on Barn Hill, there it is. <laughs> 